I want to talk a little bit about Civil War real quickly. It's the new A24 film by Alex Garland, who directed Ex Machina and Annihilation. And this film has been getting a lot of different reactions. Early trailers were kind of like, okay, what, what is this? Is this plausible? Is this kind of like a weird cash in? And the early press screenings were like, whoa, this is actually a big thing. It's, it's, it's bombastic. It's a really intense film. There's been some backlash over some of the footage used in the film, a lot of contrarianism leading up to the release. But after that early press screening, I was really interested in seeing it. And I saw it today. And I have to say, honestly, I think a lot of people who have seen this movie aren't really getting what it's trying to say. So I want to talk a little bit about it and what it means and give you my thoughts. And by the way, I'm not going to spoil anything. If I do decide to go into any spoilers, I will label them and you can know so you can skip that part. But right off the bat, yeah, this movie is intense. Alex Garland is a phenomenal director. He puts the camera in the right place. He just kind of lets life happen, it feels like, on screen. The film's tone is nuanced but direct, but I think something that people need to know is the sound design of this film is fucking incredible. I've seen a ton of war films, I've seen a ton of modern military films, but whoever mixed the sound on this film, uh, I don't know if they'll get an Oscar, but they deserve one because you feel like right there, it punches you with how close you feel to a war zone. The guns are loud. The impacts have a punch. Every time you feel a shot, you kind of wince. The press scenes with them feel dangerous and ridiculous and at the same time harrowing. And the film pretty much follows Kirsten Dunst, who is a well-known war photographer. She's done this for a while, along with her colleague Joel, as they kind of travel around America to try to get to D.C. to interview the president as the civil war that America's in reaches its climax. A bunch of things were said about the trailer of Civil War, like why are Texas and California teaming up together? That's kind of weird. The film has actually a really, really good reasoning on it, just so you know. Here's the one little spoiler I'll leave. You can mute for this section if you want. Uh, the president uh, decides to take a third term and then a bunch of states, not just Texas and California, but a bunch of states are like, hey, we're going to secede. And it starts this whole chaotic kind of like set of dominoes. And the way the film plays it is actually very, very believable. OK, spoiler over. But as they travel place to place, you really get to see a spin on what guerrilla warfare would be in America in modern day. Right. It's both less crazy with the pop culture still there and people are still dressed in flannels and everything like that. But it's also more horrific when you see all of those things explode when somebody runs into a crowd and blows themselves up. Kirsten Dunst is incredible here, as is Wagner Mora and Kaylee Spaney, who is this young photographer who looks up to Dunst's character. A lot of the film is told kind of through their relationship. And I think it's a great way to set the viewpoint of all of these events happening because you get to see a multitude of decisions people make when there is wartime. The acting is superb, coupled with the production value. This film does have scenes that really hit and that Jesse Plemons scene that everybody's been talking about. Yeah, it's genuinely horrific and unbelievably impactful. Speaking of impact, we should really talk about what the film is like exactly trying to say, you know, because it feels like there's a lot of discrepancy on what Civil War is trying to tell us. If you've read any reviews, you kind of already know they don't explicitly tell you exactly what the ideological sides of the conflict are like who's MAGA and who's a Democrat and who's a left. Like they don't explicitly spell it out. And the other thing you've probably heard is also that that doesn't matter. The movie isn't even trying to focus on that. And that's led a lot of people to believe that, hey, this movie is just about centrist being like, oh, both sides are wrong and and war is bad. You see, I saw this one tweak on Twitter from Arctic Ninja. Civil War movie is a visual and auditory treat, but not much else. I guess it wants to be about photojournalism, but it really doesn't say much about it or war or combat or America or anything. An odd, good looking film that doesn't go anywhere near its full potential. But it, it has statements on all of those. Now, that guy replied to me and he was very nice in his reply. But I do think that he missed like a lot of pretty clear signs of what the movie's trying to say. And I think there is a very cogent message which he missed and which a lot of people are missing. First off, while it doesn't explicitly state what the sides believe, there are some pretty clear hints as to what the ideologies actually are. They're mentioned, sprinkled throughout the film's dialogue and, and pretty heavily hinted at. Secondly, there's a scene in the middle of the movie super light spoilers because it's in the trailers where they go into the middle of a town and it's kind of like really nice and it feels like just like an everyday American town from now and they walk into a shop and they're like hey you know there's like a 
a civil war going on here and it's played up like these people just are trying to be like oh we don't we just try to stay away from that hey you want to buy some shit that and a few other things are played up as a pretty direct criticism of like oh well both sides are wrong there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across america oh sure but we just try to stay out stay out with what we see on the news seems like it's for the best uh? and again some of these takes just feel so surface level of like looking at the movie right it's like watching jurassic park and thinking it's about paleontology as opposed to you know the power of dna and science which they have a giant discussion about in the middle of the movie genetic power is the most awesome force the planet's ever seen but you wield it like a, a kid that's found his dad's gun you know you read what others had done and you and you took the next step you didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves so you don't take any responsibility this movie isn't necessarily about like oh civil war is bad and oh uh photojournalism is a hard job this movie is about people choosing their goals over their humanity it's really clear there's no caricatures in the movie there are two super nationalist scary guys in the movie who feel very maga-esque but they're not portrayed as like these hokey dokey hillbillies they're smart they're direct they're scary and when they talk about their beliefs which are unhinged they say them emphatically and like they feel there's a logical consistency there even though it's insane and horrific even the president played by nick offerman in this film when he's giving his speeches which are clearly like very political pablum it's played serious it's played like he's politically orchestrating things and the violence is very direct there's no ceremonious romantic deaths in this film it's just it's just like like a gundam death it's a switch flipping off and while there are tragic deaths in this film and some are poetic they're never played up for spectacle they illustrate more of the point of what i'm talking about the character played by dunce in the film is a war photographer who struggles with the idea of like hey i photograph these people in horrific situations burning alive dying uh I am so detached from these horrific things that are happening. There's a monologue in the film where she talks about the impact of her work, not being able to prevent the tragedy she's witnessing right now. And her and the journalist motto in the film is like, hey, don't, don't overthink this. You're here so other people can think about this. You need to just get the photograph so people can see what's going on. It's a very detached sense of what they're doing. Once you start asking yourself those questions, you can't stop. So we don't ask. We record so other people ask. Want to be a journalist? That's the job. Hey, Lee. What? Back off. And so many people are clinging on to that detachment and not what the film is directly trying to tell you. That these people, the army, the Western Liberation Forces, the president, everybody in this world has an ideological identity and they will shut off their feelings for that identity and commit war crimes. They'll make mass graves. They'll cry over their loved ones and then kill somebody else's loved ones and it's all played straight and that's what makes it horrifying the other controversy that comes up is footage used by andy ngo who is thanked in the end credits andy ngo by the way is a fucking asshole on twitter who loves to stoke the culture war very alt-right some would say fascistic guy i completely understand where that's coming from especially because i fucking hate that guy however the film is pretty not in line with what that guy thinks as well there's only about like two seconds out of a two hour and five minute film that are used like literally two seconds like you blink and you miss it and lastly i don't know if that specific footage is available from another journalist i some people claim it is but there could be legal hurdles to licensing that footage there could also be a third party who just licensed that kind of footage and they were just required to do there's a lot of different things involved there that would have that footage end up in the film but i don't think any of them are ideological and i don't think that seeing the film necessarily supports andy ngo since a large amount of the film is anti what this guy stands for and kind of a criticism of his like fear mongering and also i don't think he's getting any he's not getting any of your ticket money like there's no residuals that are going to go into andy's pocket or he's the one person in modern film history with a two second youtube clip that is somehow monetized greatly in this a24 film but again i understand the hesitancy behind it and the worry behind it has someone who severely dislikes people like that and think they are a bane of society i don't think this film is giving him a platform and if that two seconds does 
it undercuts the entirety of its existence by everything they say afterwards. And I think what they're saying is important because, listen, I talk about this every week. We live in a world where you can believe all of the right things, all of the right things. You can believe, hey, listen, uh, trans rights are human rights and uh, black people shouldn't get stopped by the police uh, and Panic at the Disco is not the greatest band in the world. Take that, Irvine. You could believe all of the things that are meant to better fellow people and you can still be a monster. I have a lot of people who agree that they like watching this channel, but they're from wildly different political spheres. I got a lot of leftists, liberals, and then some center-right people. I have a pretty wide swath in my audience. And what I think is important to remember, it's not just like kumbaya, ignore oppressive people oppressing you. That's not what it's trying to say. It's trying to say, yes, obviously, you should be passionate about what you believe in, but don't sacrifice your humanity to get there. Don't sacrifice your empathy or your feelings or, or what you see in the world or your decency to achieve a goal that is stained in blood when you get there because it's not the goal you want. This movie isn't sad or anti-war or pro-war. It just is. This is just what people do. They compartmentalize the parts they don't believe in and then they commit war crimes. And by the way, it's believable. Like, it's believable how you get there in this film. It's never demonizing anyone. And I think a lot of the people who are saying like, oh my God, this is leftist propaganda, or oh my God, this is just coddling right-wingers, are missing the point. It's a criticism of them and the hyperbole of the world we live in. And I think it's a pretty brilliant film. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think a lot of people are going to see it two times. It's not going to solve all the world's problems, but it does give you some really important things to think about. And I think the message it sends isn't about, hey, turn off your feelings and photograph what's around you. That's missing the point. That's a very high school level of looking at this film. It's not even talk to the people you disagree with. It's understand what the compromise is. Understand that there is a point to where this doesn't become about your ideology anymore. It becomes about your tribalism. And the last thing I'll say, and this is not a spoiler, but near the end of the film, one of the characters does choose their humanity over their ideology in the film. And there are ramifications to that. And it's not romantic. The situation we are in as a people is not romantic. It just is. So personally, I think the Civil War is absolutely worth seeing. Again, if you feel kind of icky because of the Andy and Geo stuff, I do understand. But it is it's so infinitesimal in the film. And I don't think he's getting... I don't really think he's getting a lot out of it. He's getting shit on a little bit. I messed up the outro, so I'm recording it uh, the morning before. I genuinely like do feel this way, and this is just an opinion. If you disagree with it, you have every right to disagree with it. Um, and I still like like you for who you are. Unless you think Panic at the Disco is the best band ever. It's not 2006, okay? You can grow up. It's okay. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we got a brand new freestyle of the news this weekend. Anyway, my name is Etabani, and I'll see y'all soon. Let's go!